Greetings programs and welcome back to Arc Neo Reviews. So for today's figure I actually have to quickly first look at another figure. So the get it out of the way quickly figure is going to be the Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves Golden Archive Olga or Olga. I can't remember exactly how they said her name in the movie. They didn't exactly say her name a lot. But uh, yeah this is the only figure I have from the Golden Archive of the main cast so far. Uh, right off the bat, I have to say, like, well, in terms of sculpt and everything, yeah, they, you know, you can tell that this is Michelle Rodriguez, but uh, they should have had her do, like, a more barbarian-y facial expression. Like, her expression's just too flat for this being the barbarian of the group with the big axe and everything. But, you know, it, it is what it is. It's basically a Marvel Legends figure in terms of posability and stuff. The hair's kind of soft, so it can move out of the way for stuff. Um, this thing here is its own piece. It moves around. Again, it's kind of soft and flexible. Little removable dagger on there. It's remarkably well sculpted, actually. He does a really good job of looking just like a, an old aged little dagger. Um, other than the face, my only kind of gripe with this figure is the way that the axe works. Because, you know, in the movie, it's a retractable axe. So here they just give you two sticks and one axe head. Um, the problem is, as you can see from the horrible stress marks on here, um, Changing the axe head is not easy to do. It's pain in the butt. Stress this stuff out. I put it on the long one and I'm leaving it there forever. You also can remove this piece if you want or, you know, change its angle, whatever. I'm just going to take it off because it's kind of in the way now and kind of redundant. But, you know, overall, it's kind of a B-grade, you know, effectively Marvel Legends. It's not terrible. Go look at any of the Marvel Legends figures I've reviewed if you want to see, you know, the full range of posability or anything. It's pretty standard stuff, but we need to talk about her for a second so we can talk about the Dungeons & Dragons Golden Archive Honor Among Thieves Gelatinous Cube. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, this thing is pretty big, doesn't fit into my setup here pretty well, so this will be one of those awkwardly up close videos with a lot of shiny in it and bumping of the back panel. But this thing's awesome. This is actually so far my favorite uh Hasbro made Dungeons and Dragons <clears throat> figure I've seen so far. Not including Dicelings. I have a bunch of Dicelings. Those are coming soon. I'm actually just going to review all of them at once that I have so far so that I can review the rest of them more reasonably. But, uh, yeah, this thing... This thing's really neat for what it is, actually. It's, as you can see, it's just a big cube. It's got stuff all over it. All the different stuff you see is removable using uh, mostly just little pegs like that, but here and there some you know, custom shaped slots as well and tabs and stuff. Uh, all these, most of these things are like, you know, fully able to be used by your other figures. So you can, you know, <clears throat> dole out the loot. You can, you know, have just a random bone thing somewhere. The bones and stuff are a little flat on one, on the backsides and stuff. So they don't, they're not as cool if you actually take them off as, some of the, uh, like, actual weaponry and things like that. As you can see, even with the, the tabs and slots to hold them on, they did still at least attempt to keep them molded on the back sides. Got, you know, uh, what I'm pretty sure is a bag of holding. I'm used to a slightly different face on a bag of holding, but that is still a bag with a definite face on it, so that's got to be a bag of holding. You know, you, you got a bunch of stuff around it. You know, you can have it as full or as unfull as you want. Obviously, yes, if you take the stuff off, you do end up with these kind of weird spots. I'm sure if you're using this for, like, figure photography or something, that's pretty easy to, you know, Photoshop out and be done with. I do also like how I actually get, like, you know, a skull and the leg and stuff. So, you know, a lot, lot of good stuff there. But 
the main thing that makes this figure, because this is technically a figure, really cool, is the inside. Now, at this point, sorry if I'm spoiling a scene for you or something, but in the movie, the movie's been out for a long time. You, you had time. Uh, in the movie, they get stuck in a gelatinous cube. Well, you can, which is hard to do without breaking my entire setup here, so I apologize for its slowness, take the lid off of this thing, in which case you will see you have a clip in here, which you can rotate, to suspend a figure inside, as well as a series of uh, the little pegs that go in a figure's feet. So there's... At least from what I can tell at this angle and all the shiny, there's six different pegs down in there. Obviously, those are sized for your figures. Now, it is the standard figure, you know, uh, stand size. So you don't have to worry about it only works with these figures or anything weird like that. I'm having to do this at a very weird angle, so this is not going super well. In fact, here, we're, we're going to cheat do it off camera so that I can actually hold things where a uh, normal human being would hold things but with those you can actually go ahead and display your figures inside the gelatinous cube I don't have her on there very well so she's a little tippy as well as you know obviously these figures often have that slightly loose area in the joint or whatever but you know whatever you get it you can go ahead, pop her in there. Uh, there is these two little tabs right here that go into that notch. So there is a very specific way in which this whole cube does fit together. This does only go together one direction. So, but this is, this is neat. You know, like I, you, you take the time to actually pose the figure and do something correctly, which I did not do here. Obviously you won't have your figure just falling around inside of it. <laughs> <laughs> but <sighs> come on, Th this thing is a lot of fun. I have already put just a bunch of different figures in it randomly. Uh, I think so far my favorite is actually putting like the bird guy from Power Rangers in here, having him just like suspended in the middle like he flew into it. Um, this thing is really weird. This thing is actually really cool. I found mine at Walmart for $9 in the clearance section, so go check since that's apparently a thing that's going on right now. The, the figures are... I'm not going to say anything bad about this figure, they're just kind of mid, you know, they're generic movie 6 inch action figures, they're really, really poseable up to modern standards and everything. We can complain a little bit here and there about the exact expressions they had. You know, they, they had the people in while they were doing the face scans or whatever. But, you know, the, the figures are whatever. This thing is actually pretty unique because it's both a... Like, like this thing, it, it's a playset. It's an accessory pack. It's a display case. And it is technically a figure in and of itself. So, I... I really like this thing, actually. I, I don't know that this thing's worth, like, the full $35 they normally ask. But if you can find this thing, you know, on a clearance, you know, the, the Walmart clearance section, or just, you know, online for $15, $20 bucks or something like that, it's pretty stinking neat. You know, even if you don't have other D&D &D figures put in it, it'll hold your Marvel Legends, your Star Wars Black Series, you put your Power Rangers in it, that's fun. It's just a lot of fun, so I do have to recommend this thing at the end of the day. So, with that said, thank you guys for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time.